Hello and welcome everybody. Today we will be solving Cambridge O levels physics paper number one. The subject code for physics is 5054 and this is second version of the May June 2021 exam. Let's start. So the first question is a student determines the circumference of a football. Which instrument gives a reading that is the circumference of the football? So first option is clippers. No, the clippers are used for up to uh, my, measuring millimeters of devices or millimeters of uh, readings. So a football is a large object. The clippers are not used for that purpose. Similarly, micrometers. Micrometers are again used to measure up to micrometer dimensions, and football is a large object. It can't be used to measure. Then we have option number C. Rule. Rule is a is a linear instrument, and that is used to measure linear distances. Um, so it is not used to measure curved surface curved surface distances. So for, you can't rule the circle. You can't measure the circumference of a football with the help of a ruler or a ruler. The option D is tape. So tape is an instrument that can easily conform around the surface of a football, and uh, since it can conform around the surface of the football, it can easily give you the measurement of the uh, circumference of a football. So yes, option number D, tape is the right answer. Question number two, it says a coin falls from start, fr sorry, coin falls from rest through the air, and eventually reaches a constant speed. As the resultant force, uh, there, there is a resultant force acting on the coin due to the two forces P and Q, as shown in the diagram. So let's say the resultant force is Q minus P, and that's it's a vector quantity, uh, it's something like this. So and this is say the resultant force R. So what happens to the force P and what happens to the resultant force before the coin reaches constant speed? Okay, so just remember, the, just at the instant when the coin started falling, the value Q is there and value of P is zero. The resultant force is Q minus P and it is maximum. So as the coin falls, the value of force P starts increasing and the resultant force starts decreasing till it can, there comes a point when force Q becomes equal to P and the resultant force becomes equal to 0 and that is the point where constant speed is reached. So what is happening? So the, as we as the coin is falling down, the force P is increasing and the resultant force is decreasing. So P force P increases, the resultant force decreases. Option C is the right answer. So next question. Question number three, it says the diagram shows forces acting on four identical solid blocks. Each arrow represents a force of 20 newtons. Which, blo which blocks are in equilibrium? So let's see. Uh, the first block. So we draw the first of all symmetry lines across all the uh, blocks in order to determine the center of uh, or the center of gravity or the or point of mass of, of this or center of mass of uh, this sphere. So this is, for example, that point. This is our force A. This is force B. So they both of these forces, if we inter extrapolate these vectors, so they are acting across the center point. And if we say, if, if we see from visual inspection, vector A or the force acting both are 20 newton and e are each other and are equal to each other, and they basically cancel out each other. So the, this we can say that this block B is in equilibrium. Similarly, this force of 20 newton acting around this point and this force is acting around this point in this fashion. So this basically creates a moment uh, across this solid and that makes this uh, uh, solid to rotate and this is not in equilibrium. Similarly, in this case a, a 20 Newton force is acting in this direction. A, let me call it A. Similarly, B, 20 Newton acting in this direction. Both are equal and opposite forces. They cancel out each other. So the R is also in, in equilibrium. Similarly, a 20 Newton force is acting on S in this direction and a 20 Newton acting on this direction. So net force acting on this point or on this force is 40 Newtons in this direction. And that doesn't make this uh, uh, 
uh, square in equilibrium or sorry in the solid in equilibrium so eventually we can say that p and q are in equilibrium so option number a is the right answer next question next question says the student lists three changes that affect the stopping distance of a car which of these changes increase the stopping distance so increasing the brake increasing the braking force decreases Let's say if, uh, so it decreases the braking distance so no it is not the option increasing the frequency friction between tires and road so it also decreases the braking distance it is not the option increase in the speed of the car increase of the speed of the car yes it increases the braking distance so only option 3 is correct so 1 and 2 no 1 and 3 no 1 no d option d is the right answer next question question number 5 it says the diagram shows a satellite orbiting a planet at a cons at a steady speed in which direction does the resultant force acts on the set satellite so the the satellite is moving in a circular manner in this direction and the resultant force or the centripetal force will be acting towards the center of the earth or the center of the planet uh, so and this is the direction of the resultant force so the correct answer is a next question 6 so the gravitational field strength in us in space is smaller than that of earth surface a rocket is used to launch a satellite from earth surface into the space how are the mass and weight of the satellite affected as so mass we are talking about mass and weight of the satellite affected as the satellite moves away from the surface into of of the earth into the space so remember weight w equals to mass into acceleration due to gravity remember mass is an intrinsic property of a material so mass remains unchanged no change whereas as you move away from the earth the acceleration due to gravity decreases so your weight decreases as we move again away from the earth so mass remains unaffected and the weight decreases option number d will be the right answer next question it says a trapped in a cylinder sorry a trapped in a cylinder by a piston by a piston the piston is moved inward so the volume of air reduces the density of air in the syringe at initial volume is given as 0.0012 grams per centimeter cube what is the density of air in the syringe at the final volume so say initial volume is say this i we can say it as v this is 1 2 3 4 v so initial volume is 4 v and this is final volume final volume is again 1 v and this is 2v so final volume is 2v we know that density equals to mass per unit volume so mass initial mass is initial density into initial volume so initial density is 0.0012 multiplied by 4v is my initial mass so this is my initial mass my final mass will be m final final density multiply by final volume so final density i have to calculate final volume final volume is 2 v so in this system we know that mass remains constant so basically our initial mass is equal to our final mass so what happens so initial this equals to this final volume so with this what we get we get 0.0012 multiply by 4v equals to this uh, final density divided by 2v so the final density value is 0.0024 
grams per centimeter cube answer is c next question so next question it says that some forces are applied at different distances from a pivot from a pivot which diagram shows the force that produces the largest moment about the pivot so remember a moment m is force multiplied by perpendicular distance so this is perpendicular distance this is perpendicular distance this is perpendicular distance this is perpendicular and the si units are newton dot meter it's my head in newton meters so force is in newtons 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 we have to check for the consistency of the units so this is centimeter this is meter centimeter meter so let's change it in meters so this is 0.9 meters this is meters this is meters this is meet and this is 0.5 meters so now moment moment of a is 0.9 into 50 this thing becomes 45 newtons this becomes 2 into 30 60 newtons this becomes 3 into 18 54 newtons this becomes 0.5 into 80 equals to 40 newton meters sorry newton meters so this is newton meters the units are newton meters not newton so so which one is the highest so answer number b is the right option so this is highest that's why okay so next question so next question says the diagram shows a children's wooden play tower which change to make tower more stable so if so if we take make the tower narrower so for example this is a tower and somewhere here is the center of gravity so if i make this tower narrower my center of gravity shifts a little bit up and if i make this tower taller again my center of gravity shifts up so so basically in order to make it more stable i need to move the center of gravity lower okay so raising the center of mass so again center of gravity is center of mass if i raise the center of mass it will become unstable so lowering the center of mass will be the best option so answer c will be the right answer next question question 10 it says where on the graph is the limit of proportionality for an elastic solid so the limit of proportionality maximum point is at point p this is the limit so remember some people make this mistake they say between o and p so no this is between o and p it is the uh, range in which the limit of proportionality is observed so o and p is not the right answer the best correct answer is p remember do not make this mistake so the limit of proportionality is at point p next question it says the weight of t newton is hung from a spring the extension produced is 6 cm so let's draw this thing so we have a spring and we have a weight and this weight is of 2 newton and the extension in the spring sorry uh, so extension in the spring x x is the extension produced is 6 cm so we know that for a spring force equals to spring constant times the extension so force is 2 newton spring constant we can calculate x is 6 cm so spring constant is 1 by 3 newtons per cm so next part is then it says a 2 newton force weight is removed and an 8 newton weight is hung from the spring the spring does not pass its limit of proportionality the spring remains within the limit of proportionality what is the new extension of the spring so the proportionality constant holds so f equals to f2 equals to k times x2 f2 is 8 newtons spring constant is 1 by 3 into x2 x2 is 
centimeters. 8 multiplied by 3, 24 centimeters. So the best answer is B, 24. Then it says, it says an object is placed at a depth D below the surface of a liquid of density P. So for example, this is a jar, this is a liquid, this is contains a liquid, liquid has a density uh, rho density and uh, there is an object that is placed at a distance t below the surface of the below the surface of the uh, liquid on which expression does the pressure on the object depend so remember pressure pressure is uh, force per unit area so and the units of pressure are pascals or you can write Newton per meter square so let's see how we can relate this with the density of a liquid and uh, at a depth D okay so generally if say if a body of mass m the weight will be mg weight and uh, mass into gravitational constant divided by meter square okay so mass is something that we can relate to density so mass equals to or density equals to mass per unit of volume or we can say that mass is density into volume so from here we can say that rho volume into gravity divided by meter square okay this this is force say if I have to say write it as force into volume into gravity divided by meter square So this will be the, uh, you can say, units of force per meter square. Uh, also, this is something uh, that is uh, comparable. And what then? What then? Uh, distance. Distance is uh, measured in, say, meters. And density is measured in, say, kilogram per meter cube. So let's put in the units uh, in this case. So distance is in meters, density kilogram per meter cube. Add them. No. Meters multiply by kilogram per meter square. So per meter cube, eventually is kilogram per meter square. So this is one. So the effective units of this is uh, meters divided by kilogram per meter 4 and this is kilogram per meter this is this is the average units for this so from this notation what we are getting is say for example kilogram per meter cube divided by meter square into volume say volume is meter cube again and uh, keep G as G it is so so kilogram kilogram cancels out each other so kg per meter square into gravity so this is something which we need to see where it is coming so here at kg per meter square no kg per meter square yes it is coming here meters for no uh, kg per meter cube no so the answer would be b b would be the right answer next question question number 13 question number 13 says that diagram shows the dimension of a box of mass m and weight w 
resting on the table what is the pressure on the table so pressure again pressure is force per unit area so the force here is determined by weight w not the mass and per unit area or area over which the weight is there so this is for example the weight a box center of uh, gravity and center of gravity the weight is or center of mass the weight is acting downwards and the area on which it is acting is the one i am shading so this is basically length y multiplied by length z so area is basically w divided by length y multiplied by z so pressure equals to force per unit area w divided by y z answer best answer is d the next question question number 14 it says which graph shows the relationship between pressure and volume of a fixed mass of a gas at constant temperature remember pv equals to nrt this is uh, the equation this th in this equation fixed mass at constant temperature this means that this part is constant so pv is constant so if we have to plot p against v this is a inverse relation one by so with a, for an inverse relation remember a and d are linear relationships these are not inverse relationships so these are not options this is an exponential sort of relationship this is again not an option so this answer b is that is the best graph that shows an inverse relationship between two quantities so answer number b is the right answer next part question number 15 since it says the work it says the work done by force f on a body is calculated by multiplying force f by a quantity q what is the value of q so remember work done is equal to force multiplied by distance traveled in the direction of force in the direction of force so distance traveled in the direction of force so yes it is there distance traveled perpendicular no this is not work done velocity no we are not having to talk about velocity on the direction of no so the best answer is a next question next question is that a girl lifts a mass of 1 kg from the floor and puts it on a ledge 2 meter above the floor so for example this is uh the place where the mass is placed this is 2 meters above the floor this is mass is 1 kg and how much potential energy gained by the object gravitation free strength is 10 newton per kg so m g h is equal to the potential energy so 1 into 2 into 10 20 joules so the best answer is d next question question number 17 it says a copper rod is heated at one end which statement describes how heat transfer occurs in copper so remember copper is a metal energetic copper molecule so the metal do not have molecules so this becomes wrong so energetic copper molecules this again becomes wrong energetic free electrons yes electrons are free and when heated they become more energetic move from cooler end to the higher end so the heat transfer occurs when heat travels from hotter side to the colder side so no cooler end to hotter end no hotter end to cooler end is something we are looking for energetic electrons move from hotter end to colder end yes so answer number d is the right answer next question which heat transfer process do not require a medium so remember radiation is the heat transfer mechanism that do not require a medium rest conduction it happens in solids it requires medium convection it ha happens in air and in uh, in liquids it requires medium so radiation is the only uh, mechanism through which heat can transfer the best example for it is the sunlight or the heat energy from the sun coming to us through via space because space does not have any medium so the best answer is c question number 19 the list shows four physical properties mass resistance voltage and volume how many of these properties can be used to measure temperature first of all can mass be used to measure temperature no resistance yes resistance can be measured used to measure there is a device called thermistor 
that basically gives or varies the resistance with respect to temperature then voltage yes there is a device called thermo couple that basically relates voltage versus temperature then volume to remember PV equals to NRT from here V or uh, is proportional to T or we can always have volume versus temperature and there are equipment or instruments which are there uh, which converts the volume against temperature so yes we so we have basically one two and three quantities uh, three physical properties that can be used to measure temperature so the best answer is C3 question number 20 next so the diagram shows clin a clinical thermometer which factor affects the thermometer uh, th sensitivity of the thermometer constriction no the constriction do not affect the, th uh, the uh, sensitivity of the diameter of the bore yes so the narrower the diameter more the sensitive th the thermometer be the, uh, the, the higher the, uh, the larger the diameter of the bore less will be the sensitivity of the thermometer length of the glass tube if we increase the length of the glass tube we can increase the range of the, uh, the temperature which can be measured by the clinical thermometer not the sensitivity so again no thickness of the glass tube no thickness of the glass tube basically increase the response time of the thermometer the thermo, uh, thermometer so no this is not again not the answer so the best answer is B diameter of the bore next question next question says which statement about the thermal expansion of solid, liquid and gases is correct? Liquids do not expand. So liquids expand. This is false. Liquids expand more than gases. No. Liquids expand less than gases, but less than solids. No. Liquids expand more than solids. Yes, but less than gases. Yes. So this is or this appears to be correct. Liquid expands the same amount as solids. No. So the best answer is C. Next question. Which row describes the shape of liquid, shape of a liquid and arrangement of its molecule? So remember when we put a liquid into any container, it takes shape of that container and the molecules are not regularly arranged. So the arrangement of molecules is not regular and it takes the shape of the container. So remember the arrangement of molecules is not regular in gases and liquids however in solids the arrangement of molecules is regular so the answer is C. Question number 23. Uh, air sealed in a fixed container sealed in container of fixed volume is heated. The pressure of air increases how do the molecules of air cause this increase in pressure. So what happens in this case is that the molecules uh, so uh, when this is heated the molecules gain further energy and they strike more often with the walls of the container thereby increasing the uh, pressure exerted per unit area thus increases the overall pressure so let's see which statements explains this phenomena in a better manner molecules expand and push no so molecules don't expand so this is wrong molecules move at the same speed and hit the container with greater no energy if we have heated this the kinetic energy of the molecules increases they move with more speed the molecules move faster yes and hit the container more often yes it appears to be a good option uh, the molecules move further apart and hit the container more often so the molecule that is sealed in a container so basically they move further apart is not something the overall uh, dimension the container affects so again D is not the right so answer number C is the best choice we have next question question number 24 it says the ray of red light enters a ray of red light in air enters the semicircular block which of the diagram shows partial reflection and a refraction of the ray so first part so light is entering from a rare medium to a dense medium and then again from dense it is going into the rare medium so this is air again this is air and this is a solid block so what happens so rare so so it is impinging on this material at an angle of 90 degrees so it keeps or it continues in its path till it comes here 
at the boundary at the boundary we have to check basically two conditions for reflection we have to check angle of incidence must be equal to angle of reflection and refraction we have to see or it must obey Snell's law and Snell's law said that when it enters from dense to rare medium the light bends away from normal so first of all let's see the in, in input in, uh, reflection case incidence angle reflection angle both are not equal so it won't be the case again check it here the incidence and the reflection angles are not equal so these two won't be there so but what about C and D so the incidence angle and reflection angle appear to be same so first condition holds again for this case incident angle reflection angle holds so first condition holds for C and D second case the light from denser to rare medium bends away from the normal so it is bending this one this one appears to be bending away from the normal so the option D is better suited compared to C so the best option amongst these four is D next question question 25 it says an object of height 1.5 centimeter is placed in front of converging lens of focal length 2 centimeter the arrangement is shown is shown on full scale diagram what is the linear magnification produced by the lens so the linear mag magnification simple height of image divided by height of object so or height of image if if this is uh, 1.5 centimeter and this is 1 centimeter so we can easily measure this thing to be 2 times 1.5 or 2 times the size of the or 3 centimeter so size of image 3 divided by 1.5 so the magnification is 2 so answer will be a next question it says in an optical instrument in which optical instrument is the distance between distance between the object and the lens less than the focal length of the lens so number a option camera so camera basically you can place object in at any focal length if you want so this is not the right answer so magnifying glass yes the magnifying glass the it, the object is between F and O or the center of origin photographic enlarger the object is between F and 2F of the lens projector again the same similar as uh, a photographic enlarger F and 2F of the device so again this is not the case this is not the B is the right answer or a magnifying glass next question next question says which of the two waves are component of electromagnetic waves so light waves yes sound waves no water waves no again longitudinal waves sound waves longitudinal waves are not electromagnetic waves or transverse wave similarly infrared waves yes ultrasound no longitudinal wave ultra uh, violet waves yes In, uh, electromagnetic spectrum so all these A, B, C are not answered so we are left with D X-rays and microwaves yes so answer number D is the right option next question the sound from ship is reflected by a cliff an echo is heard by the sailor on a ship four seconds after the sound is made the sound the speed of sound in air is thir is 320 meters per second so how far the cliff is cliff is from the ship so for example this is our cliff this is our sea this is our boat and the sailor is standing here so the sound is made sound goes strikes the cliffs come back to the sea. so the distance traveled by distance between the boat and the cliff is d distance traveled by sound distance traveled by sound is 2d time is 4 seconds and speed 
speed of sound is 320 meters per second so distance d is speed into time and this is 2d basically so distance equals to 320 multiplied by time is 4 second divided by 2 so this becomes 640 meters per second oh sorry 640 meters so distance is d the best answer is b next question it says student are, students are asked the uses of ultrasound, suggest three uses of uh, ultrasound are suggested, which of the state suggestions are correct. Cleaning jewelry, yes, sonic bath is used to uh, clean the jewelry, so yes, ultrasounds are used. Tanning in, on a sunbed, no, ultrasound is not used. Obtaining an image of an unborn baby, yes, uh, for fetal uh, uh, growth and fetal observations, ultrasound waves are extensively used in medical imaging. So P and R are the right answer. P and Q, no. P and R, yes. So answer B is the right answer. So next question. Question 30. It says the end X of a metal rod attracts north pole of a compass. Which statement about rod is correct? So first of all, the, magnetic, uh, the material must be magnetic. And it attracts north pole it means that there must be it is not initially magnetic because it has if it has attracted north of a compass so a south pole is induced over here for some time so basic so basically uh, this thing is a magnetic material which is not initially magnetized so let's see which is the best option so it is made up of copper that is not initially magnetized so remember copper is not a ma good magnetic material again copper is not a good magnetic material so it is not the case it is made up of steel and that is not initially magnetized it appears to be the best answer made of steel and appear and is north pole at x so if there is a north pole at x it would have repelled the compass needle so this is again not the correct answer so the best answer is c next question Question 31, it says a positively charged rod is held close to an insulated metal sphere. The sphere is earth and shown. The earth connection is removed. First, you remove the earth connection. Two, then you remove the rod. Which diagram shows the changes in the sphere after the rod is removed? So when the, for example, this is a positive charge. So negative charges are introduced here. So there are six positive charges. Six negative charges are introduced. Here on this side and positive charges are gone there but the elect since it's earth the so electrons from the earth move and neutralize these positive charges so the only negative charges will remain so now you have done what you have removed the earth connection and then removed the rod so once you have removed the earth connection there was one two three four five six here so as soon as removed positive charges starts to appear here but so something like this will happen and then you immediately remove the rod so once you immediately remove the rod some of the charges will go and neutralize these positive charges and overall these negative charges are redistributed over the sphere and the quantity will be a couple of charges less than whatever the total charges were because they were you know lost in or used for neutralizing so something like this will be the shape of your sphere so a no b no c looks good d no so the best answer is c next question the next question shows the diagram shows a circuit and the circuit is shown uh, and the ammeter has four range settings which range settings they were reading near to the midpoint of the range so best way is to calculate the value of current so let's calculate the value of current so current will be equal to voltage divided by r from ohm's law okay so there are two resistances in parallel 5k so in parallel the total resistance is r1 plus r2 so the parallel resistance becomes r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so this becomes 5 multiplied by 5 divided by 5 plus 5 so 25 divided by 10 2.5 kilo ohms is my effective resistance so my voltage is 12 volts my vol resistance is 2.5 k kilo ohms so, so my value of current is 4.8 milli 
amperes so 4.8 milli amperes is my current so which range setting will give me the value in which my m meter reading would be somewhere in the middle so 1 to 0 to 1 milliampere no this is out of range 0 to 10 so yes it is somewhere near 5 so it will be the best value so let's see another one 1 0 to 1 ampere no it will be much less than the middle of this range 0 to 5 it again no. so best answer is b 0 to 10 milliampere then question number 33 it says in which of the example the current is 1 ampere so it says a charge of 0.1 coulomb passes through a resistor in 100 seconds so q equals to it charge a of 0.1 coulomb uh, passes through a resistor current I have to calculate current divide and time is 100 milliseconds so current is this 0.1 divided by 100 milli equals to 1 ampere so 1 ampere is this so yes a is there 10 volt lamp without with with input power of p so p equals to vi power is 0.1 divided by voltage 10 equals to current and this value is 0 0.01 amperes so no this is not the answer a resistor of resistance this with a potential difference of 2 so i equals to v by r 2 divided by 0.5 this is 4 amperes so again this is not the right answer two resistors with a current of 0.5 in series so 0.5 ampere currents this is r1 this is r2 in series the value of current remains the same so the current is 0.5 ampere in series so again this is not the answer so answer a is the right answer let's see next question so which of the graph shows the relationship between a current and voltage of a filament so the current and voltage of a filament would look like this so if i plot voltage on the x-axis here current on the y-axis here the voltage would look like something like this or if i plot current on this axis voltage on this axis the the graph would look something like this so voltage is on x-axis so voltage is on x-axis current is on y-axis so the best uh, simil similar looking graph is uh, this a a a so a part is the right answer next question so it says a third a 100 watt lamp is switched on for 5 hours each day for 3 weeks cost of unit is this so remember the cost of electricity is always dollars per kilowatt hours so if we have so can we calculate the total kilowatt hours so total kilowatt hours so first of all we have 100 watt lamps converted into kilo so we have this much kilowatt of lamp switched on for five hours for each day for each day three weeks so multiply it by seven we'll get one week and multiply it by three we get three weeks so this is our total kilowatt hours then cost or cost is dollar per kilowatt hours multiply by total kilowatt hours will give us dollars so this is 0 0.24 multiply by 0 0.1 multiply by 5 multiply by 7 multiply by 3 so this thing will give us dollar 2.52 approximately and this is best answer is c next question so the next question is it says a three pin main plug contains a fuse a device a device with double insulation has a cable connected to the plug which of the plug which which part of the plug are not connected to the cable earth pin so earth pin are generally not connected to the plug so this is not connected to the plug yes fuse yeah the fuse is connected to sorry uh, the fuse uh, uh, is again a part of uh, the plug and fuse is connected to the cable so yes is it is uh, it is not connected to the it is connected to the cable so it, yes it is uh, connected to the cable 
live pin yes it is also connected to the cable and neutral pin yes it is also connected to the pivot so the only thing that is not connected to the cable is earth pin so the answer is a then the next question the next question is question 37 it says a trolley carrying a strong magnet rolls down a ramp at constant speed remember this is constant speed it passes through the coil as shown so this coil is shown remember this is the magnet as it moves near the coil it will start inducing an EMF and as it enters the coil it changes its direction starts to move out it goes in this and oh, sorry it moves near the coil and it starts cutting the coil so it or this in this and as it starts moving away from the coil the EMF will be generated in the opposite direction or the lens is lot to basically oppose the uh, uh, cause and effect so this is something that is uh, that will happen so the more the speed of the trolley the higher will be the frequency or lesser will be the time period so velocity equals to f lambda f is 1 by t or lambda or this is velocity so so if uh, uh, if, I, if i if the trolley moves with a higher frequency the time period will be shortened for this and if i increase the number of turns this amplitude will increase the more will be the induced emf so let's see an electromagnetic force in induced in the coil the graph of the emf is plotted against time so yes this is something with the experiment is repeated with different coils and a steeper ramp so the more steeper the ramp more faster will be the velocity more uh, uh, or higher will be the frequency of this uh, emf generated signal so it says that which graph uh, produced by the coil with the least number of turns and the steepest ramp so for the steepest ramp you have high frequency with least number of coil low amplitude so least number of child uh, and the lowest of the amplitude so the lowest of the amplitude is either this or either this so these two are high amplitude so no second thing high frequency so high frequency means low time period time period is small so this time is say t1 and this time say is t2 so t1 is greater than t2 so the best answer is c so the frequency of c will be higher and the amplitude would be lower so the best answer is c next case next is a student uses a transformer to light a filament lamp using a 230 volt AC supply. The lamp has a maximum voltage rating. So the rating of lamp is rating at 6 volts. So it needs 6 volt to operate. More than that it will operate but it will also burn out. What happens to the circuit when it switch on? So basically this is a transformer. So these are n1 turns these are n2 turns this is v1 voltage this 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 voltage will be your v2 voltage or vs secondary voltage or this is v1 or your v primary voltage so what is the relationship between so n1 v1 equals to n2 v2 n2 v2 so n1 is 230 divided by v1 sorry n1 is 300 divided by 230 n2 is uh, 20 and this is v2 so my v2 value will be 20 into 230 divided by 300 this 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 so this is 46 divided by 3 volts so 46 divided by 3 uh, is approximately 15.333 volts so output secondary voltage is approximately 15.33 volts which is much larger than the uh, rating of the bulb so what will happen to the bulb the bulb will immediately glow and it will you know uh, light up or the glow will be much more and then it goes out or it will burn out because of the high voltage rating so the lamp does not light at all no 
lamp will light the lamp lights at normal brightness no the lamp will light at higher brightness lamp lights dimly no lamps light brightly lamps light up brightly yes and goes out yes because it is at higher much higher than the rate and value so and it will go out so the correct answer is d next question so what question 39 says what does an alpha particle consists of so alpha is generally done by this so proton number is 2 so it means that it has two protons and 4 minus 2 is 2 neutrons so it has two neutrons and two protons so two electrons no two neutrons not nah. two protons and two neutrons yes two protons four neutrons no two protons two electrons two neutrons no B is the right answer now Question number 40th or the last question of this exam. So it says the count rate from a radioactive source falls from 400,000 counts to 5,000 counts per minute in 72 minutes. So time taken is 72 minutes. Initial count N0 is 4,000. And after time T count 500. So the, our formula for half-life and not 1 by 2 t power capital T where capital T is half life so and not 4000 the count and we remember that the count rate is directly proportional to the half life to the uh, decay or, or the way the radioactive uh, element is decaying 500 oh sorry uh, this is uh, 500 this is 500 this is 4000 this is 1 by 2 this is T by capital T so 5500 divided by 4000 equals to 1 by 2 T is 72 minutes divided by capital T that is the half life so 1 by 8 1 by 2 72 by T and 1 by 8 is 1 by 2 power 3 1 by 2 power 72 by 7 so comparing the coefficients 3 equals to 72 divided by t so my t value is 24 minutes so the best answer is d so now uh, we have completed our paper number one of may june 2021 examination series remember this is the version two um, so i hope that you would have learned a lot from this uh, session and I hope this session is fruitful for you if you have any questions please feel free to post it in the uh, chat box and I wish you all the best for your examinations uh, thank you very much for listening